Hey guys, Dan with SWI here. Uh, today we're gonna show you how to uh, how to drive groundhogs. Yeah, good job, Joe. Oh, ground rods, ground rods. I'm sorry. <laughs> so we we got this one. So we're gonna start it with this one. We're gonna finish it with this one, and then once we get it finished with that one, we got a secret weapon. I just would love to show you. That's what we're gonna do. Remember the rhino driver? Did you watch that video? Even if you didn't, it doesn't matter. Check this out. So this will fit a two and three eighths post. Perfect, and you can drive it that way. Or when you get the driver, it comes with bushings. So what we're gonna do with these bushings is we're gonna take them and they insert right up into the driver. Nope. First, you gotta take off the coupler. So they insert just like that. You screw the coupler back on, the seat maybe. What would you call that thing? Yeah. Yeah, we'll call it the yeah. You screw the yeah back on. And then we're gonna fire it up and we're gonna drive a ground rod. Maybe, maybe a Wyoming harpoon. Maybe, maybe not. How was that? That's pretty fast, right? So currently on this driver, we already have our handle extensions on. Now, if we didn't have our handle extensions on because ours is already set up for driving fence posts, we would take this off and then the bottom piece would come up here and we'd be able to drive this thing all the way down to the ground. So we just drove this ground rod with the Rhino Driver Multi-Pro XA. As you can see, it didn't take very much time at all. It was faster, easier, more efficient. I've seen the other ones before that you can put into the hammer drill, but you have to, the, the downfall about that is you actually have to break out the extension cord and break out the generator, and then you have to put it up on top and then break it all back down. If you're doing a lot of ground rods, maybe you should look into one of these. The only thing you gotta do is gas it up and nothing to break down once you're all said and done. So you have all these different adapters for pipe sizes. So. You can reduce down all the way down to a ground rod. So bush down to a two inch and then bush down to a three quarter. So that will do a five eighths or a three quarter inch ground rod. And the green is inch and three quarter. Or if you just go with no collar on the inside, you can go to a two and three eighths. With the Multi-Pro XA, like I was talking about, find a link below on driving Postmasters with the Multi-Pro XA. I would much rather use that any day. Oh yeah, I'm making record time. Yeah, they swing over good. Miss. Miss. Oh, I got that one. I don't know how much time that took me. That one didn't take me any effort. So I wasn't just trying to show you how to drive a ground rod. I also have to drive one. So that way, if it gets struck by lightning, you're not gonna electrocute yourself. You're not gonna shock yourself because electricity likes to go to ground. So what I am doing is I am weaving it through the chain link and then attaching it to the ground rod with this little doomahickey. It's like a connector of some sort. It's a gal man grounding clamp. There you go. Well, come on. No, -uh, I got it on. Look at that. I came prepared. So you take your little crescent wrench. This is the biggest tool I have in my toolbox. It's big. And then you just put the Number six, bare copper wire, solid bare copper wire. Sorry, it's not stranded, it's solid. On the back side of the ground rod, take the ground clamp and then pinch it together. And then on that, we also have a, we're gonna take that little clamp right there 
whatever it's called. Because I'm not an electrician. See, if I was an electrician, I would've known that. I think on this one, what do we gotta do? We gotta do this about 60 more times. Yeah, 59, because we got one done. It pays to do it fast. It pays to be efficient. One thing I didn't tell you, this ground rod is five eighths by eight foot and they want all of it in the ground, but like that much. So when driving it in the ground, one end is pointy. The other end is somewhat flattish with a little bit of a, a chamfer, a little bit of a chamfer on the top. So uh, when probing for utilities, what you want to do is have the pointy side down so that way you're guaranteed to penetrate through it. You want a good penetration there. Um, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Just so you know, we do have locates. We did call them in. Uh, obviously, you don't see any paint on the ground because we're clear. There is no utilities right here. Oh, oh, hold on, hold on, whoa, whoa. That's right, I forgot. Put my little clampy on. So we're, we're maxed out on this ground rod. Uh, we're right next to the highway. And of course they brought a whole bunch of fill in for the highway to build it up. And there's a lot of nasty boulders in there. Easily about 150 pounds. We're all the way down the max that we could. It has nothing to do with the pounder whatsoever. It went down as far as it possibly could. It still beats doing it by hand. It still beats doing it with a sledgehammer, doing it with a T-post pounder, or doing it with a, a hammer drill with that little adapter thing. So if this is something that you think you might be interested in, go to the link down below. You know, buy four, five, six, seven of them. Until then, you have a good dang day.